Got it. Welcome to another freezing cold morning in the UK. It was snowing last night. It was an absolute nightmare. So I've trudged through like three inches of snow walking to the studio this morning. Gutted the studio as you can see. So we're all cleaned down and ready for the next stage. Now I worked over the weekend, got all this prepped. So we've got the front fender. I left you off in the last episode. We put the primer down. Now I've knocked this back 180, 320, and then finished off on the DA uh, 500. So I've knocked all these down to 500. Now we've got a little bit of filler work to do here. When I was knocking this back, where this edge is on the fiberglass, because these are like, I mean, you can see the finish on this bit. They're not brilliant on these edges here. There's thin bits, thick bits as they go around. So when you came around to this bit, it was sort of like a little crack in there and very thin. So I've just built that up, put a skimmer filler over, built it up, and we're just gonna knock that back sort of flat. We've got the cover here, knocked all that back to five, and there was a little, tiny little nick on the actual piece here. So I'll put a little bit of dolphin glaze in, sorted that out. So we've just gotta sand these bits back. There's a bit on the other side to do as well get that one finished and them two are ready to go so we can move on after that's prepped clean everything down wax and grease remover again give it a good clean and then we're going to drop some plastic primer on the edges any edges that are broke through like these edges here i've had to really sand out these plastic prime all these edges and get the plastic primer so it goes round this edge and all in here so it gives a good area for the paint to bond to and then we can go over the base coat now the base coat we are using is a solvent base i've had this mixed by my friend around the corner who owns a paint mixing shop this is crimson too and it's a jaguar color really nice metallic so that's what we're going to use for the claret on the west end today we're going to use the standox plastic primer highly rated guys it's really good it works it's worked on all the plastic stuff that I've used it on, it's brilliant. So they're the two we're going to be first off use, get this up into a base coat and then we can just sort the table out, get the airbrush stuff out and then I can take you through the logos. We've got to mix some colours up, I've got to mix like a, a very light blue for the logos and run in a little bit extra on the logos as well just to theme it up a little bit more. So. I'll see you in the first step, we'll drop a time lapse on, get these little bits prepped up now, they're all dry, and get some plaggy primer down. So I'll see you in a bit. Right guys, I'll put the plastic primer down off camera, I've just dust it in, round the edges, any breakthroughs, a little bit of plastic primer. I've got the crimson mixed up, we've got the gun set up, I've cleaned these down, tack ragged them, blew them off, so they're good to go for a base coat. Now I'm gonna go in really light, just do a very light coat all the way around, and just build these coats up to full coverage, nice and light. So I'll see you in the next time lapse. There you go guys, in that first time lapse you can see, very light. I'm just building this up nice and light, letting the warm air come over and just dry this down because it's really cold. We're just taking this a step at a time, nice and slow. Don't go too wet on your panels. I'm running medium thinner, I've not got a fast thinner. I could do with a fast. 
it'll just dry out the panel quicker. So I'm just having to take the time, warm it up, let it do its thing, flash off, and then just build the coats up. So we're gonna go for the next coat. This one's gone down clean. There's no sort of bits landing in it, but as you can see, very light, you can still see underneath. And we'll just keep building this up nice and light and get this fully into coverage. So I'll see you in the next coat. coat down still not got full coverage we're still seeing through but I'm just taking my time letting these dry down between each coat and then just build it up build it up but they're going down okay if you go too heavy too quick with solvents you can get all sorts of troubles so just let this flash off Got the heat turned up, I'm gonna grab a coffee, let this cure down, and then we'll drop the next coat on. See you in a bit. So while that's drying down in there on that last coat that I just talked you through, I'll give you a little talk through of this bit. I've just redone the sort of paint side of things in here, and I'm trying to make this work in here better for me. I've got all the studio set up so I can just go in there. Airlines are all hooked up, all the brushes are in the foam on the wall now. And I just wanted to sort of get into this side and tidy this up because I didn't have much workspace on here. I had the gun wash machine sort of thing that I made here and it was in the way. So I've mounted that down here, put an aluminium splashback on there. So you can clean your guns down, strip them with that. You've got a little light there just to put a bit more light. You've got your flake king bits at the top with the guns then you've got your guns that I can use in the studio primer gun and things like that up there got two more racks here so you can wash your guns dry them on drip trays here you can mix your paints here and then my paints I've got fridges they're not turned on I've just got two broken fridges that I picked up you know, where the motors are gone but they're great for storing your painting because they're insulated all fridges have got insulated walls and like a double glazed door on the front so you can keep your paints inside there and what I usually do is I usually warm the studio up let the warm come in here warm these two up and then just close the doors and the temperature stays nice in these for the paints it just gives the paints a little bit of warmth because there's nothing worse than freezing cold paints all this piece in here is insulated 100 mil Celotex all round and insulated on the floor in here as well so it does keep the warmth in this side of the studio quite warm I try to keep this warm because of the paints cups things like that so it's all to hand a little bit of memorabilia on some of the bits that I've done some of the scooters that I've done the magazines I've been in on the wall Sometimes it's nice to look back at work, but then other times you think, crikey, I remember how much work went into that and into that, and you think, oh, but yeah. And then we've got other bits here, easel. So everything, every bit of wall space in this room here is being used, but it works. It's all to hand. I know where everything is. And it just makes your life easier. It saves you scratching around looking for things. There's nothing worse because you just waste time. So that's drying down nice. That's up to... 18.1 in there now and we can set timers on here and just let it just leave it doing its thing drying off and then we can stick the next coat down so i'm going to drink the coffee and then i'll see you in the time lapse when we drop the next coat down see you in a bit paints dry again we've got that last coat you've seen I put down didn't go in I went in like a wet coat but not really heavy like I would in the body shop in the body shop with the heat in there on them blue fenders that I used to do you could hammer the base down and you could put a wet coat like you would down when you do clear coat because you've got the heat it just flashes off nice and it just lays down really flat 
in here I can't do them sort of coats because you're applying it too wet and it is not the correct sort of temperature in there. I've got this up to like, it's 19.1 now, it's going up and up and up. But the minute you put the extractor on, you're pulling like outer air outside, which is like really cold, and you're bringing that in and mixing it with the warm air that's in the studio. So I'm having to go really light. So they are flashing out and they are laying down flat, just going and taking the time. And that's what you've got to do if you're working from your studio at home just take your time i've got all the paint everything that i'm using paint wise thinners everything is in there at 18 degrees and i'm keeping that nice and warm i'm not bringing cold paint putting it in the gun i'm trying to keep everything at a certain temperature as i'm painting and it just makes it go down that little bit easier summer months is great when you're painting because then you can just adapt your thinners and things like that for, for when you're painting and you can get better results because it's warmer but these cold i mean it's there's snow outside so you can imagine how cold it is but we've got it to a nice sprayable temperature in here so i'm going to do the next coat which will be drop coats i've got the horn cast to mask out and do the center line on the horn cast it's not a problem quick wipe down degreaser fine line that off bag both sides off and just drop a couple of coats down on the center of that and that'll be good enough i do drop coats on these a couple back it off with the gun drop the pressure down a bit and just do a nice drop coat to finish on these and then we can leave this to cure down for the next stage which will be logos now i'm going to leave this for a couple of hours let the base coat go completely off in that temperature and then we'll start the next bit so i'll see you in the next time lapse we'll drop some more coats down and crack on see you in a bit we've got all the base coat down and it's looking really nice that's the cover all done nice coats on that with a drop coat we've got the front mud guard all covered up drop coats on that center horn cast colored in now done and the side panels both done so the next stage on this just going to let this really cure down and then we can move this one out of the way the horn cast get them out of the way just put the bag over them just bag them up and that and then we can start the logos on here on these pieces the two side panels drop the logos while mix some paint up and get these logos down so i'll see you in the next step i'm going to get all set up and i'll take you through the process of the logos so i'll see you in a bit right guys we are moving on to the next stage i've got the panel all set out Backed all the easel in paper so it's sitting on something quite cool so it's not going to mark up the actual base coat. I've located the logo slightly off, not straight because you've got this swage line that runs down here. So I've just flip booked the top one into where the swage line goes and we're just going to run at that level like that. This actual font is like you'd see newspaper cuttings, like little squares. We'll be applying the graphic and then spraying i've got like a baby type blue mix this is like closest to the actual logo color i'll pop the logo up in the screen so i've mixed a blue to go for the logo so we're going to apply this hinge it squeegee that on peel the top off bag the rest of the side panel out and then we'll do light passes and we'll just go around and get all this logo in. So I'll see you in the next step. It'll be a little time lapse and we'll get this logo down. See you in a bit.
guys, that's the first logo down, gone down, super clean, nice, sharp, and that's what you get when you use proper cut out made up stencils on artwork. Gives you that really nice, crisp look. The blue that I've picked is absolutely spot on. It just pops off this, off this um, crimson. Looks really nice. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is, keeping in this logo, I'm just gonna drop some tiny bubbles, just make it going across over, just keeping it into this section here. Just a few, just popping along, along there. So that's nice and easy, we've got a stencil for that. I've got some thinned out white base coat and you just do bubbles really lightly and then we drop a couple of colours over and you'll see these bubbles come to life. So I'll stick in with the time lapse and get the bubbles there. one done that's how you get some realistic bubbles down if you want to do bubbles to make them look like they've got all the coloring and your high reflections and that dead simple go in with a circle stencil I've used solvent based white and I've just basically gone in dusted very lightly in the solvent base then I've gone in with a fluorescent blue transparent dusted over around the top so if the bubble was at the top points here you'd be reflecting sort of the sky so the blues and then i've gone in with the purple just dusted over the blue knocked it back with the purple and then gone in and dropped the highlights in freehand and just put some white dot highlights in and that makes the bubbles pop like that so you've got realistic bubbles so that's one side complete we've just got to mirror match that to the next panel and then we'll be good for clear coat so I'll see you in the next step. Finished. I've got all the artwork down. Logos are done. You probably caught a little bit in the time lapse, but I've missed a couple of bits because I've added some extra bits just to tie it all in together. I'll give you a little pan around. It's looking really cool now. So we've got the Cockney Rejects logo with the realistic bubbles just floating off across the logo and just over the logo. So that's looking really nice. This metallic base will look loads better once this is clear coated you'll see the metallic it will shine up more on this mirror matching that side all nice and clean artwork bubbles again coming over on that piece same color nice and then i've done the toolbox casing just dropped a couple of the bubbles coming up off there so that's finished that off we've got the center horn cast with the pin lined out and the crimson down the center and i've just dropped small just dropped a few little bubbles just passing across the top of the mud guard just to tie it into the rest of the artwork so that's all done guys looking all nice ready for clear coat so a nice one to do but it's come out really well so the next thing is to do clear coating 
but not today because we've got to gut all the studio out again. There's all dust and that in here, so I'm going to get all this cleaned out. We're going to be using the Capsair 6030 HS clear coat on this. It's a really nice drop of clear coat over this. But that's going to be in the next one, so I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe, press that notification, drop us a thumbs up, like, shares. It all helps the channel, guys. And I'll see you in the clear coat stages. Cheers.